enough of that screaming. No, nope. that's enough. That's enough of that. That's enough. Good morning. Sister Christian, know oh, your time has come. And you know that you're the only one, it's true. Where you going, what you're looking for. Oof. Good morning. God morning, okay. I'm a man who doesn't know how to say contradiction. You stream along. Oh, you got your book? I love it. You stream along. Karma, 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 chameleon. You come and go. You come and go. Loving would be easy if your colors were like my dreams. Red, gold, and green. Red, gold, and green. Every day is like survival. You're my lover and I'm your guy. Oh, every day is like survival. Survival. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I drank four mimosas yesterday. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Good morning, talkers. My socks and my shoes do not match. I'm wearing state of style B, bumblebee socks and I don't even care. My kids are like, you look like a dork. I'm like, I do not care. <laughs> um, I have just been singing all kinds of great songs this morning. I was singing Donna Summers this morning too. It's actually Donna Summer but we like to make it plural, like, oh, it goes, you're my lover, not my rival. Oh, well, add that song to the list, long list of lyrics Jamie has been singing wrong her whole life. Um, I was singing Donna Summer. Someone found the letter you wrote me on the radio. Oh, shit. <laughs> What'd they say in the letter, Donna? <laughs> Things are not the same since we broke up last June. I know that's right. Um, yo, I cannot sing, but I don't give a squawk. Okay, I will. Just because I can't doesn't mean I won't. Um, anyway, how's everybody doing this morning? I got to tell you a story about this weekend. Leads us to a bigger conversation about predatory behavior. And truthfully, the, uh, the, um, sort of experiences that we have as women that, men just don't understand. And I want you to understand Michael's point of view um, as I explained to you like what I told him. By the way, I washed my hair last night, which is why it may or may not look better. Who the hell knows anyway? All right, that's enough of that. I've been listening to that all morning. Yep, 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 yep. We get it, you're maiden. Yeah, I know, I know. All the ladybirds have heard it. It's like that drunk guy at the bar that won't like stop. And you're just like, bro, we know. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell you the truth about Mother's Day. 
I'm going to tell you the truth. Did you ever like, did you ever like really want to have sex with someone really bad? Like you were totally looking forward to it and like you really were like, really thought it was going to be like super, super dope. And then you have sex with him and it's just so average that you don't know how to feel. You're like, I mean, I guess it was good because it was fine, but like I thought it would be better and I'm kind of disappointed. Like, I don't know if I'd do it again. Like maybe I would. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Probably. But maybe not. That's kind of how Mother's Day was. It was like fine. It was like 16 candles in the beginning for me. It was like 16 candles, except I was Molly Ringwald and it wasn't my 16th birthday. It was Mother's Day. And I was like, how long am I going to have to walk around this house before somebody acknowledges that it's Mother's Day? But whatever. Okay. So you notice he did shut up though. So, all right. So now anyway. Um, okay. So last week I'm walking in the neighborhood. I don't know about you guys, but my big outings are walking in my neighborhood. So I walk a lot. Like I literally walk like, um, I don't know. Honestly, I'm walking like five to seven miles a day. And it's really good for me, and I get it's good for my mental health, and it's good for my cardiovascular, although I'm really moseying most times. I would say shuffling at best. I don't even know if I call it a walk, but I don't really care because I'm moving one foot in front of the other outside. So for me, it feels like a walk. Some people would see me walking and go, mm, it's more like a shuffle. I don't really care. So anyway, I mean, I'm not, I'm not winning any walking races, okay? This isn't a mall walk. All right, it's not a dance walk. It's just like a walk, shuffle kind of thing. But I'm out there and I'm doing the thing and sometimes it gets really hot. So I'm, sometimes I feel like I'm going backwards. But anyway, so I like to walk because it gets me out of the house and frankly, it gets me the hell away from my family. And um, I've walked so much that my dog has lost weight. Are you fucking kidding me? So I'm walking, I'm doing all the walking and I'm not really losing any weight. And they, the vet said, Jamie, you need to stop taking Knox for so many walks. He's down like four pounds, five pounds, which is a lot on a boxer. You need to up his caloric intake, give him more food, and stop walking him five to seven miles a day. That's a joke if I ever heard one. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, so he gets to eat more and exercise less? Meanwhile, I'm surviving on four blueberries and a fucking TikTok with 800 shuffle walks. Nothing's changing. Okay, got it. Hysterical. All right. Okay. So, anyway. Um, can't take knocks anymore. I don't want him to lose too much weight. All right. So, anyway, um, I go for a walk last week, and there's a truck with a very popular pest control company around my area. Now the truck passes me, I'm walking. Truck passes me again, I'm still shuffling. The guy in the truck is looking at me. He comes back and this time he goes like this or some sort of something with his mouth and his face and I go, like that. That was my response. Something, some, some mix of horror and disgust. Okay. And I'm walking up the hill towards my house. He passes me, makes the face. I give him the reaction. Like I want to vomit in my mouth and he parks behind me on the side of the street. So I have my phone. Um, and I turn the camera on and flip it around, right? So I can see what is going on behind me because now I'm nervous. Why is this guy stopping? And what's with the weird face? And what are you doing behind me on a side street, right? So I'm watching, by the way, ladies, excellent tool on your phone to open the camera 
right? Like you're taking a selfie and use it to look behind you. Because mother if you're going to try to get out of that truck and come for me, I'm going to see you coming. Okay? With your Ron Jeremy weird porn stash on your face. You might want to consider shaving that because it makes you look like a creepy guy. Okay? So anyway, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at him. I go up to my house, get on the porch, sit on that black bench that I have. And this mother effer has the nerve to do the slow drive by. Okay. Now I want to explain something to you. So hear me out, right? Hear me out, right? I tell Michael, babe, you're not going to believe this. The blank, blank pest control guy. This is what he did. Blah, 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 blah. So Michael's like, he was probably just looking for a house. I go, oh, really? He was looking for a house doing this to me. Right? So Michael's like, babe, you're good looking. You're, wow, oh, okay, talk about the point going directly past your face, okay? I'm not looking for a compliment here. In fact, when I do my shuffle walk, I'm dressed like Susan on a Sunday with too much cream cheese around her face, okay? I don't go out there dressed in some sexy camel toe one piece, okay? I'm not in an adult onesie looking for attention there. I'm just walking, okay? Even if I was in an adult onesie, it would not give anybody the right to do this to me. Okay? But I'm like totally dressed down. All right? Like I'm totally like don't look at me. Okay? So anyway, I okay, so I say nothing. I, I say I, I leave it there. So then Michael's like, do you want to call the company? I'm like, no, I don't want to call the company because like maybe I, this is what happens. This is what we start doing. Maybe I didn't see what I thought. I don't know. Maybe he like, how embarrassed would I be if I called the company and the guy was like, what is she talking about? I was licking cream cheese off my face. Like I wasn't even, I didn't even notice her. Then I would be mortified. Right. So I'm like, all right, let me not say anything. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm being cooped up in the house too long, whatever. A couple of days later, meeting Friday, that happened like Wednesday or Thursday. Friday, I come in the kitchen. Now, moms, I want you to hear me closely here, right? Moms, I'm, I'm outside working and I come inside and I count children. See, that's what mother hens do. We immediately count our chicks. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Where the fuck is the third? So when we don't see a chick, we immediately go, where's chick? Where's chick? Where's chick? Right? Michael goes, I let her take a walk. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I let her go for a walk in the neighborhood. I go, what, what, what exactly do you mean? I let her go for a walk with music, with an iPod or whatever, and her earphones. And I let her go for a walk in the neighborhood. I go, you let her go for a walk in the neighborhood. After I literally just told you about creepy guy, he goes, babe, doesn't make him a pedophile. I go, oh, now we're taking chances. Okay. Let me please keep in mind and Phil, I'm so glad you're watching Phil. Um, keep in mind that Olivia has never taken a walk alone in an in any neighborhood, let alone a new neighborhood where we just moved in. Now I'm sure everybody in this neighborhood is lovely, but guess what happens to mom? Neurotic mom raised by neurotic Susan. Guess what happens to this mom? Immediately, I start thinking the absolute fucking worst. I start envisioning myself knocking on every door, begging people to search their houses because I can't find my kid, right? So like some moms are normal and they go, oh, she's taking a walk. She's 12 and a half. She's probably fine, right? Not this mom. This mom turns into Liam fucking Nielsen, whatever his name is, Nielsen, Nielsen, whatever, from Taken. And I literally start to lose my mind. What do you mean you let her go for a walk? He's like, babe, it's a walk. I'm like, Michael, it is literally Survivor out there. He's like, you're, you, he's like, Jamie, this is a safe neighborhood. Okay. I am, I just want you guys to know, I admit that I am neurotic and erratic. I want you to know that I fully understand that my level of worry and like jumping off the deep end is extreme because I was raised by Susan who has called me 457 times to tell me that vitamin D is proven to help people with coronavirus. Am I taking vitamin D? Now, she didn't call me once or even five times. She's called me and texted me 150 times about vitamin D. 
this is who I was raised by. So I just want you to understand that is my programming. Whereas Michael was raised by my mother-in-law, who's very calm, does, is not an alarmist, does not worry. And anytime I'm like, oh my God, Carol, she's like, Jamie, it's nothing. Stop. Come on. So very different things. Okay. Now, Olivia is 12 and a half, right? So to some people, she's going into seventh grade. Okay. Now, to some people, that's middle school. That's, oh, she's fine. I used to ride my bike everywhere. I used to do everything. I went to parties where people were getting to third base in middle school. So I understand we were faster. But by the way, I wasn't the mother then. I'm the mother now. Totally different story, okay? And I'm aware of the dangers that lurk outside. I was not at 12 and a half or 13 in my, in my middle school, okay? I was chubby eating too many hot dogs, and that is true. Okay, so, hi, Cap. All right, so I freak out. I get in my car. I start driving to look for her. Now, I get to the, the crossroad. I got to go right or left. So I make a right, and of course, as I'm driving down the block and I don't see her, I'm starting to sweat. I'm starting to literally come unglued. What does my life look like if, my if I never find my child? Is this Adam Walsh? Has she been taken? I will knock on every door in this neighborhood. I will not, I will, I'm, I'm literally playing out a horror movie in my mind. I get around the cul-de-sac, I go down the other road until I finally lay my eyes on her. Just walking with earbuds in, listening to music, probably doing some stupid TikTok dance, right? Okay, I see her. To me, by the way, doing the TikTok dance with earbuds in your ear screams, I'm young, I'm innocent, steal me. Okay, this is how I think. I know, Susan, I know. Susan, Susan's like, oh, Jamie. Okay, so I pull over and she looks at me and she goes, mom, what are you doing? I go, Olivia, you gotta get in the car, baby. I'm not okay. She goes, I'm not getting in the car. I'm walking. I go, Olivia, I'm, I'm not okay. She goes, mom, I'm fine. So we have this whole thing. And I say to her, Olivia, I just need you to understand what has happened to me physically since I found out that you left the house to go for a walk. I've started to sweat. I think I'm getting diarrhea. My stomach hurts. I don't feel well. I'm not like well. So if you love me, you will just get in the car. She's like, don't guilt me. Don't manipulate me. I'm like, okay, fair. So I'm like, what if I just drive behind you? She's like, you're so annoying. I'm like, oh my God, okay. So we make a deal that she's allowed to go for walks in the neighborhood, but I, she either has to take Knox with her or I have to go and walk way behind her. I don't need to walk with her. She could TikTok till the fucking wheels fall off, okay? I'll be in the back listening to my music 20 paces behind her, but that's how it has to go. So she starts negotiating about like uh, age. When I'm 14, maybe. When I'm 16, eh, getting closer. <laughs> getting closer. She's like, when I'm 18, I'm like, yes, absolutely. When you are 18, girl, you could take a walk in this name. <laughs> okay. So I want to tell you what happened to me yesterday. The whole story gets to what happened to me yesterday. So fast forward to yesterday. I go for a walk in the morning with my dog, okay? And a police officer, yes, I said a police officer. I'm talking to my friend on the phone. A police officer drives by and I happen to notice because police officers don't typically come in my neighborhood. So I go, whoop, whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police and my friend's like, what do you, what? I go, there's a cop in my neighborhood. Now, shout out to all my hip hop fans. We'll definitely know what that was. KRS one. Woo, woo. That's the sound of the police. Woo, woo. That's the sound of the beast. Anyway. So, so, um, I notice the cop, the cop drives past me and I go copper, you know, whatever. So she's like, okay. And then I'm still walking with the dog and the cop goes past me down 
around the cul-de-sac and comes back up to leave my neighborhood. But what he does is he goes very slow behind me. Now I have ear pods in, so I don't see him. And then I feel, I feel the presence of something. So I turn and jump and he laughs, right? And I'm like, and he keeps going. So now the cop has exhibited playful behavior, right? Okay, hi, you're funny, Mr. Police Officer. I like it. Okay. And he leaves. He leaves my neighborhood. I watch him because now I'm walking towards the exit of my neighborhood to which there's only one exit. You can't turn around. It's just a street. He goes all the way up and pulls out of the neighborhood. So I keep walking, right? I get to the end. Now, he had to be out of the neighborhood long enough for me to walk all the way up the hill, turn around, and walk back down. So I would say at my shuffle walk, you're looking at a solid 10 minutes, 12 maybe, right? So I'm walking back down toward my house, and I'm still talking to my friend on the phone, and I turn around and I see the cop coming back. And I go, oh, the cop's coming back. She goes, he is? I go, yeah, how much you wanna bet he stops? She's like, no way. Sure enough, he pulls up next to me, opens his window. How are you? I go, good, how are you? Now see, I want you to understand something. This is not the same behavior, this is not the same fear as like minorities have when cops go out of their way to come back around and ask them, what they're doing in the neighborhood, right? This is now female, like predatory, like, so equally as, well, no, that's probably more fearful because minorities get killed. I didn't think I was gonna get killed, but I did think so. I just knew, it. I just knew. It's the weird feeling, that spidey sense we have. To which he says to me, now I don't know about you, but I think this is a very weird question to ask someone walking in, in their neighborhood. He goes, hey, how are you? I go, no, I, I absolutely cannot imagine being a black woman, which is why I never stop speaking out ever, which is why I try to be the best ally ever, because I absolutely can't imagine. No, I, but literally my mind can't even fucking get there. All right, so he pulls up next to me and he goes, hey, how are you? I go, sorry, the trampoline is so loud. Hold on, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna go away because this is the good part of the story. Hold on. Because I want you guys to understand what we deal with and what it feels like and how it, how it feels super weird. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, trampoline. Hold on. I don't know that this will be much better, but I'll try. Okay. So he says to me, Hey, how are you doing? I go, good, how are you? Now my girlfriend can hear him because I have my ear pods in. And he goes, how long are you gonna be out here walking? Now think about that question. How long are you going to be out here walking? I don't understand the question. I don't fucking know. Till I'm tired of shuffling my fucking old ass around, I have no idea. So I go, I don't know. He goes, oh, okay. Uh, what kind of dog is that? I go, it's a boxer. He goes, oh, he's big. I go, you think? All right. He goes, what does he weigh? I go, 60 pounds. He goes, oh, nice. Does he bite? No, he goes, is he friendly? Now, anytime someone asks me if my dog is friendly, I lie. I lie. I go, no, he's not friendly at all. He goes, he's not? I go, no, he bites. I said, that's why I keep him on a leash, because he bites. Because here's the thing, all dogs can bite, but you never want to tell people that your dog is like some big marshmallow, right? Like, no, he's so sweet, he'll lick you to death. No, fuck that, come near me or try to come near my house, my dog will bite your face off. So anyway, I'm like, uh, no, he's, he bites. He's like, oh. I go, yeah, that's why I keep him on a leash. He goes, oh, that's smart. I'm like, yeah. So he's like, um, 
He's like, all right. And I'm like, all right, anything else? Cause like, I'm respectful to police officers. Like, okay, if there's, is there something going on? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for him to be like, I'm, you know, there's something going on. And he's like, all right, well, maybe I'll see you again. I said, well, let's hope not. And he looks at me and I go, you know, it's never good when the police have to show up. And he smiles, he's like, all right, have a good day. Now, I come home. I tell Michael. Michael's like, babe, he's a cop. He's just being friendly. I go, how long are you going to be out here walking? Not, have you seen anything? Everything good in the neighborhood? Nothing. How long are you going to be out here walking? What does that mean? I don't know. Like, in my opinion, now granted, I did not have a wedding ring on. So maybe he was getting off his shift. Maybe he thought I was attractive. But you can't approach women like that because it feels predatory. And the problem is that we are triggered. I don't know about y'all, but I am triggered. And when people, it makes me uncomfortable in my own neighborhood. It makes me feel like I can't even shuffle walk if I want to. And here's the thing. The thing is, is that there are certain places that women expect to be hit on. We expect to be hit on in bars. We expect to be hit on in restaurants. We expect, we don't expect to be hit on in stairwells, in elevators, walking in our neighborhood. Because when you approach us with certain lines of questioning, like if you approach me at a bar and you're like, hey, how long are you gonna, you gonna be here? I feel like, okay, he's hitting on me. This is the environment for that. But when you approach me walking in my neighborhood and you say, how long are you gonna be out here? That feels like you are tracking me. It feels weird, it feels tracking. And what we need, what I need men, and I know it's like mostly women watching, but what I need men to understand is, if you're gonna shoot your shot, ask yourself, is this the right environment? Could this be perceived as creepy? If he had pulled up to me and said, I'm getting off my shift in like 15 minutes. I'd love to come back and talk to you. Are you gonna be out here for a while? I would have said, I'm married, but thank you so much. But don't saddle up next to me in your patrol car, which is a very, it's a power move, right? Whether he intended it to be a power move or not, there is a certain power, right? That, that implicates, right? How long are you gonna be out here? That feels like I'm obligated to answer you. I'm not obligated to answer you. And I want you guys to understand something. If you agree with me that I am not obligated to answer him, if you agree woman to woman, think about it. If you, if you get that this cop pulled up alongside me and said, how long are you gonna be out here? And you go, you shouldn't have to answer that. Now I want you to think about how many minorities are stopped. Where are you going? How long are you gonna be out here? And they don't wanna answer, but they fear for their lives. So they have to answer. And then we say things like, well, you should have answered. Well, fuck that, I didn't wanna answer. I don't have to tell him how long I'm gonna be out here because that feels predatory to me. It feels weird to me. I don't like it. I don't like the pest control guys doing slow drive-bys, I don't like, so then I have to be fearful of my 12-year-old daughter going for a walk in my neighborhood because I am now painfully aware, right? Now I am painfully aware of what goes on. And sure, sure. Is, are they probably not pedophiles? Would they probably not be interested in my 12-year-old daughter? Probably not, but am I the mother that's willing to take the chance? No, I am not the mother willing to take the chance. So I want to say this, right, I, Cindy, ba Cindy Bales, do you know that I played it out over and over in my mind yesterday, thinking what if I would have said to him, with all due respect, officer, that feels like a very weird question. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to answer that. 
I'm not sure why you're asking me that. But because we've been kind of trained to just give them answers, right? And the truth is this, ladies, we have seen time and time again with assaults and rapes and, and, and kidnap or uh, I don't know what it's called when an adult is kidnapped. It's not kidnapping, but it's something napping, adult napping. We, we uh, have seen time and time again that being white or being rich or being whatever does not mean you're safe, by the way. Plenty of uh, women that don't fit the mold are assaulted and whatever. So I'm like, ah, right? Okay. So I had to have a heart to heart with Michael yesterday, even though I'm not really talking to him because of the rose bush. But I had to talk to him and I said to him, I need you to understand um, I need to understand, I need you to understand that these things are real and that when we allow our daughters to go out there thinking they have to be nice and respectful to adults, which is what I teach my kids, that somebody could pull up next to my child and she will think she has to be nice and polite to adults. And I don't know what that means for her. And because I've seen it twice now in my neighborhood in less than a week, it scares the shit out of me. So the next time you think about sending my daughter out there on a walk by yourself, I suggest you remember this conversation and don't conveniently forget any parts of it like you did with the rose bush. Because I will fucking really cut you if you send my kid out there on a walk by herself in a world where she thinks everybody is out to help her and love her and that everybody is godly and Christian and good like her. And she feels like she has to be respectful and kind and nice and obligatory and all of those things. Uh -uh. Not going to happen. No. So, Michael, I think, gets it. Because he was like, okay, I got it. And I said to him, do you understand why it feels predatory for me to have men pull up next to me? To have them stop behind me or to make faces at me or to ask how long I'm going to be out here walking? And he was like, yes, I understand. And then he said something that was really important to me. He said, I'm sorry that men continue to make you feel that way. I'm really sorry. That must be an awful feeling. Yes, it is an awful feeling. Thank you for acknowledging that. Thank you. And ladies, to you, I want to tell you this. Trust your instinct. I don't care who it is. Trust your instinct. If something doesn't feel right, open your camera. Take pictures of trucks. Take pictures of... of of uh, license plates, whatever it is. If you're not comfortable with something, it's okay to say, this makes me uncomfortable. And by the way, I want you to know that I love police officers. I think the majority of them are good and important and necessary and safe and, and I value them and pray for them and we need them. But I don't, I don't like the way it made me feel. And I don't want any of that to happen to any of you. Uh, and so I told Michael, I was like, I'm doing a coffee talk about all of this. And he's like, oh, babe, you're going to make people think you're insane. I don't care. I don't care if people think I'm insane. Um... Women's intuition is real, Leslie. You're absolutely right. Women, your, your body's intuition was given to you as a gift from God to protect you. When something doesn't feel right, you don't have to explain why it doesn't feel right. It is not your responsibility to educate people why their behavior makes you uncomfortable, period. It doesn't mean they are predators. It doesn't mean they are rapists. It doesn't mean they are kidnappers, no. My feeling uncomfortable by your behavior does not make you the worst. It does not mean that you are a predator. It just means that your behavior felt uncomfortable to me. So I just need you to acknowledge that and keep your distance. Because I am well aware that there are men who have made me feel uncomfortable that are not predators at all. And I am also well aware that some of their behavior would not have made other women uncomfortable. And that's okay too. Any other woman could have been walking and had that conversation and thought, this is fine. 
I don't feel uncomfortable at all. And that would be okay for her. And I acknowledge that we can experience the same situation and see it totally differently. I felt uncomfortable. I didn't like it. And that was me. And keep in mind that Michael is also more trusting because Michael is a man. And he has not experienced that before. But you know what is so funny? So when Michael and I first started dating, he told me this story about a woman that he worked with who kept hitting on him all the time. And at first it was like funny to him and people would joke about it. And then he said to me one day, he's like, you know what? I really don't like it. I really don't want her to do it anymore. Like it's, it's like annoying now. And I remember we talked it through and I gave him some advice on how to handle it. And it's so interesting to me how men rarely have to deal with that. But when they do, it's funny at first and whatever. And then they're like, shit, this does not feel good. I'm like, <laughs> it doesn't, does it? It doesn't, does it? So I just wanted to share this with you to let you know that um, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. That's just it, you know? If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. And it's okay if it makes you uncomfortable and it doesn't make other people uncomfortable. That's okay too. It doesn't have to make everyone uncomfortable for it to be uncomfortable. If it, it doesn't sit right with you, it doesn't sit right. And that's okay. And you should feel good about like fine with that. Okay, maybe it works for you, Alice, but it doesn't work for me. That's all. We're just, we just have different thresholds. Um, all right. Let's take a couple of questions. Then I got to go to work. Women can also be predators. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Towards men and women. Um, okay. On Instagram, if anybody has any comments or questions about this um, topic um, in particular, feel free to ask me and, or to ask to join my live. Um, how about this hair, folks? Ooh. Um, anybody, anybody, anybody? Thank you, Faye. Um, let's see. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. I see you. It wants to load. It's trying. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, why is this not working? I don't know. I can hear you, though. Oh, bummer. Let me try again. We'll try one more time, sister. Well, we'll try with someone new. Hi. Hi. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's your name? I'm wearing my cross. Oh, I, I love, love it. it. Me too. Wait. We're twins. Yeah, we are twinsies. What's your name, Elizabeth? Yes, my name is Elizabeth, and by the way, I gave my your book to my ex-husband to read yesterday. Oh, great! He lives, he lives around the corner from me. Oh, that's so weird. I know. No, it isn't. It, it, so it's it, not... no, it's we have four kids, so it works. Right, it, so know, it works it's perfectly. Really, really good. Right, really, really good. So I wanted to comment on what you said, and I think you you kind of glossed over it a little bit when you were talking about Olivia. But it is so true that we want our kids to be so, so polite, and we teach them to respect adults, and in the wrong situation, it can be dangerous. And I think, you know, especially as women, we as women also are supposed to always be nice girls, we're always supposed to be polite, and I actually have a friend that I worked with who was um, in our office. Uh, parking lot 
and she was accosted. And by the grace of God, it didn't turn out badly. But it was worse than it probably should have been because she started out polite when her gut was telling her not to. And we just, we just, we, the, the ramifications of being rude to us yes. are worse than the ramifications of someone trying to hurt us. The thought that we could be perceived as crazy or rude or combative is so terrifying to us that we would rather entertain these weird conversations than just say, this doesn't work for me. I'm walking away. And if you try to fucking follow me, we're going to have a big problem. I will scream fire and roll around on the ground and eat grass and scare the shit out of you. So get away from me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know. Your phone trick with turning the phone camera around to watch someone following you. That I had never even thought of that, but that is fantastic. Yes. And you can take fantastic. screenshots if you see them behind you. Yes. You can take screenshots. Great, great idea. Yeah. But I will tell you, no 12-year-old here would be out walking alone. So I would be the mom in the car following behind. Exactly. I exactly know. Exactly. I was said. like, I was Just like, freak, I was like freaking out. Yeah, of course. Um, of course. Well, I appreciate you reassuring me. I mean, I, it's nice to hear that I'm not the only one. Um, not. I think everyone on here was agreeing with you. <laughs> um, and I love you, and I thank you so much for watching. I love you. You make my day every morning. Oh, so thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Mwah. I love you. Have a great thank day. You. Bye. Love you. you too. Bye-bye. Well, that was so nice. Uh, let's do one more and then I got to go to work. Um, trying to pick somebody I've never picked before. If you've already been picked, try not to, um, request because I'm trying so hard to give other people a chance. Oh, my eyebrows. Oh God. Y'all. Hi, Breeze. What happened? Did this person request and then go away? Uh, I'm going to give you another chance. We'll stop requesting me if you're unable to join. That feels super weird. Um, congratulations, Angie Hillard. Oh, my allergies already. So annoying. Look at that gray hair. Look, just... Just defying the odds. <sighs> okay, that one didn't work either. Um, well, if you don't have an option to request, I can try to request you, let's see. Um, hi. Hi. How are oh, you? God, I haven't even looked at myself this morning. I look horrible. Luckily for you, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. God gave you those lips? Yes. Oh, really? So I you you just them. you just out here showing up and showing out, huh? <laughs> okay. So, uh, I what's your name? You, I, my name is Camille. Hi, Camille. And I'm in California. Okay. Camille from so California. We're on this Friday will be 9 weeks uh -huh. of shelter in place for mm -hmm. us, so Living the dream. Yep. Um, but I just wanted to tell you, I have an almost fifteen, uh, almost sixteen year old, and she does not walk alone. I'm that mom, so don't feel bad. I appreciate you saying that because because it's just there's to me there's no safe neighborhood anymore. It can happen anywhere. So that's the reality we live in. She thinks I'm crazy. She has friends that live a couple blocks away, and they get to do it. Walk. Oh, that's the best one. So-and-so gets to yep. do it. And you know what? I go right back to what Susan used to say to me. I'm not so-and-so's mother. And yep. if her mother lets her do it, that's her business. But in this house, we don't walk alone. Exactly. Exactly. So she, we get in fights about it. But too, too many things happen. I tell her all the time. I used to try to shelter my kids from the news. Now... Get, with there's a date line on because she's going to college in two years and I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to have to be on medication. I know it. Um, I'm with you. But I watch the episode.
friends with her and say, look it, this is what happens because she's the same way. No, they're nice. Nobody would ever do that, you know, and it's, that's the world we live in. So she's starting to come around a little bit, but just, you know, little things like, you know, she's a young girl. She's going to be 16, has a body of a 25 year old. Um, which my husband, when we're out, he wants to kill everyone who turns their head to look at her. I know. And it, it, it just terrifies me, it terrifies me. Well, I'm in the same boat with you. And again, like it really does take a village. And I told Olivia, like, I don't mind driving you. It's not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. Right. You're going to be out of the house before long. You're already 12 and a half. I have four and a half years left with you mm -hmm. before you leave or six grades six school years yeah. left and before i know it you won't need me to drive you anywhere so i'll drive you if you want to go somewhere mm -hmm. even if it's around the corner i don't care i'll jump in the car and drive you i'd rather do that and i tell her all the time when your friends say things like let's just walk to where wherever and you know you're not supposed to be the cool yeah. girl who's like nah my mom will drive us let's just call okay. her don't get suckered into the whole like let's go because mm -hmm. if I catch you, yep, it's gonna be worse. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the same way, and luckily my my daughter can start driving next month, but she's not in a rush, so I'm all for it. Great, <laughs> take your care. time. Like, take your <laughs> take your time. Keep driving you. I don't care. I know it's it's really she's lucky to have you. Thank you, and I, your kids are lucky to have you too. Thank you, and I love you. I love you too. Have a great day. You too. Bye. All right. Well, guys, the good news is that most of us on Coffee Talk are lunatics. <laughs> and that makes me really happy to know. That this is really the last one because I got to go to work. Um, let's see if... Hi. Hi. Oh, my gosh. Um, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, I totally agree with you. You're not Wait, what's your name? I deal with my, I have a, an 11-year-old daughter and my 12-year-old nephew is always with me too. And excuse uh, baby Jackson over here. Don't be silly. I love it. But, um, you know, I live in the suburbs and I don't let them go outside by themselves even anymore because it's not the same times that we grew up in. Nope. There's this guy who walks around my neighborhood and I'm concerned that he doesn't even live in this neighborhood honestly and he's like weird and the girls know like if he's outside you and you're outside you go in the backyard yeah you have a pool in the back you're not allowed to wear your bathing suit out front no you. girl um, let me tell you about you. susan if you if susan would catch you on the front yard in your ba if you had a one piece on it wasn't it wasn't as bad but if you had a two piece on and Su we had a pool growing up and Susan came out around front and caught you with a bikini in the front oh, yard, break, girl, my mom was the same way. did you ever see it? Did you ever get smacked when you were wet? Oh, that's the worst. The, the worst. worst. Susan, like no, that. Susan used to snatch you by your hair so you couldn't run. She would snatch you by your hair with your left hand and whack your ass with her right hand. And oh, you would be mom, wet. She's a, uh, she was a freaking ninja. With ninja. A with a chancleta? Forget it. My <laughs> mother... I don't know how they hook the corners like that. I'm like, all right, thank you. That hurt. <laughs> I love it. It's good to know that I wasn't... So you were raised by a Susan too. I love it. I was. I definitely was. It's so She's funny. We laugh about it now, children. but we don't do that to our kids. I feel like it, it kind of you know stopped what? with I'm, us. I'm very sure. I have to share my daughter with her dad. Okay? And he's like the electronics everything give you anything and everything that you ask for and i'm like michael read a book have a nice day she's uh she <laughs> she's a, she's very balanced and what i'm grateful for is that when i send her out places she's always invited back she uses her manners but i you know i, I got lucky i guess because we're all just winging it we're all, oh my god like <laughs> literally some days i'm like whoo that could have gone off the rails. Don't eat that. Um, but I, but I really, um, you know, our culture is such that women are sexualized at a very young age. Like, like I don't, my girls are not allowed to wear bikinis. It's been a fight between Michael and I. Now we've moved to the tankini and the 
longer thing, right. you know, and I'm the crazy mom because I won't I let them wear bikinis. One one. It's like an open back, but it's long sleeve and it comes down mm -hmm. and it's got the bikini bottoms, yeah. but yep. it's super cute. And I'm like, why don't they have these? I gotta go to like a surf shop and I live in Western New York. There's no fucking surf shop over here. Listen, <laughs> I I'm telling you right now, everything has changed. Like, it... It used to be, and I'm sure that there were, obviously there were pedophiles and creepy weirdos in the 80s. I mean, hello, that's literally when the Center for Missing and Exploited Children started because of yeah. Adam Walsh. So we know it was real. There was milk cartons with kids on it everywhere. But it felt more balanced. Boys were taken, girls were taken, you know, whatever. Now it just feels like this weird sexualization of young girls all the time. And like... And it's scary because like when I was 11... I didn't have a body. Girl, I'm 43. I still don't have a body. <laughs> I just never got one. Like, and, 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 um, I, I don't know. Does 716 mean something to you? That's where I'm from. Okay, people keep commenting 716, so I'm guessing that's a big coffee talk area. Um, but. It is, actually. Every time I'm, I'm usually, I watch your Facebook every day. I get my coffee in the morning and I'm on Facebook Live with you every day. Thank you. And I'm like, let me get in on this conversation because this is one I feel passionate about. Um, so I had to switch over to Instagram. It's so it's so truly beautiful to know. And you know what? I I love you for for watching and thank you uh, for commenting and for being with me every day. It's so good to know that like there's other mothers out there who are literally just like me. You give us a little piece of a little piece of mind. And it's hard to find these days somebody that is like relatable and you don't you don't sugarcoat stuff. You know, you're not one of these Willy Wonka chicks who like pretends that everything is like, you know, rainbows and butterflies shooting out your ass. You're like real life. So, Every I day I have diarrhea. <laughs> it's not butterflies. It's nerves. It's um, I love. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Have a great day. <laughs> y con mucho, y con mucho gusto. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, okay. Well, she's my friend now. Um, I'm so curious if there are any fathers on here. Really quick, are there any fathers on Instagram watching? If you're a father, um, any father, I don't care if you share your kid, if you only have your kid every other weekend, if you have your kid every day, whatever. Or if you're a father, will you raise your hand? I'm just really curious if you're a father. Any fathers? Okay, Blue Ghost, will you talk to me? I want to I wanna talk to fathers. I just want to know... I don't want to know if you play girl, keep it on the low. Cause my heart can't take it anymore. Don't be scared. Come on, talk to me. Come and talk to me. I really want to meet you, Blue. I really want to know your name. Uh, I'm so curious. I know. Uh, Layston's mama, I'm trying to get um, Blue Ghost to talk to us, but I don't know if he's going to. If there's any fathers on here, um, uh, oh, I don't know how to do this. Can you explain how to request? I've never done this. I think there's just a button that says... Uh, oh, shit. I don't know what I'm doing here. I think there's just a button that says send request. Um, okay, well, blue ghost. Okay, well, click okay. Come on. Come on, Cleanus. Come on. Hi. Hey, how you doing? What's your um, name? My name is Cedric. Hi, Cedric. How it's so doing? nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. I work in the, in, in the industry as well. Oh, great. I love it. Cedric, are you a dad? I am. Do you have daughters by chance? I have a daughter, yes. You do. Okay, so so how old is she? 16. Oh, so you're in it right now. You're in it. You are in it. So let me ask you a question. Well, as I got, I got two daughters. Oh, you do. Okay. So let me ask you a question. As a father, do you feel like we as mothers, based on this conversation, are... Too much? Do you feel like we are too protective? You could be honest. 
Mm. In some areas, yeah. In some areas, no. Like, like your daughter's 16. What Do you live in New York? Do you live in California? Where do y'all live? I live in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay, great. My neighbor. Um, oh, I should have known. You probably found me from Luda, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I should have known it was ATL. Okay. So in Atlanta, do you let your daughter walk alone? No. No. Absolutely not. And why not? Because, I mean, like you said, it's all types of weirdos out here. Uh, you know, people with ill intentions. And, yep. then, you know, my daughter is uh, developed. This is what I'm talking so, about. She got a body, right? Yeah. And then you have to worry about grown men looking at her like she's 26 instead of 16. And they don't even care if she's 16. That's the scary part. Exactly. So um, when you tell her like she can't walk alone, does she push back with you? Does she say like, dad, I'm going to be fine. Just let me go. No, nah, she knows what it is. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be me with Olivia. Like, she already knows. She already knows. She already knows. Okay, so basically you've established rules with your kids and they know what it is. So there, and Atlanta, like Birmingham, we have, we share the I-20, uh, I uh, 459 corridor and we have the highest amount of sex trafficking in the country. Oh, really? Yes. So in Birmingham and Atlanta, where the interstate connects... There are more girls trafficked through the country through our intersection than any other place in the country. So somebody could snatch your daughter off the street and she could be moved to another part of this country before you even realize she's gone. And that to me is terrifying because the police, they can't keep up. No, yeah, I, I've, I've, I mean, I'm very aware of um, the whole sex trafficking thing that's going on. I mean, you know, you see it everywhere now, the uh, airports. Yep, you know. in the airports, absolutely. Yeah, if you see something, exactly. say something. It's crazy. Yeah. But it's just good to know that the fathers out there, like, it's not just the mothers, like, no, you can't walk alone. Because we, what we really need is for y'all to back us up. Oh, yeah. Because the girls love to go to their daddies and go, Dad, Mom's crazy. She won't let me do anything. And... <laughs> What we need is for the fathers to say, nah, she's not crazy. You're crazy for thinking you could go out there and walk by yourself. Oh, yeah, it's a tag team. It is a tag team. It's a tag team. Remember that song back in the day? Tag team, back again. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> That's how you know we're old, if you know that song. Oh, yeah. Whoop, yeah. There it is. <laughs> Yo, me a beer. Um, all right, well, I'm so glad I got to meet you, Cedric. I'm going to be doing a pitch, please. I'm going to be doing a pitch, please Instagram live series once a week. I'm putting the materials together for it now on how to pitch your content. Okay. So if you're interested in that, you could just keep following my Instagram page and see the, the, uh, details for it. Okay, cool. Have a great day. You too. Great talking to you. Uh, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, moms. It's not just us. It's the dads too. Um... Um, it's the dads too. That makes me really happy. Okay. So I love you all. Truly. I pray for you. I pray for your children. I love you. I want y'all to be healthy, happy, safe. I just ask God every day, God, please keep Coffee Talk and all of their families covered in your glory, in your protection, in your healing. I keep you cloaked. I keep you covered. I pray for you every day. I love God and I love you. Have a great, great day.